What's up guys? I just wanted to hop on and do a video on fruit inspecting. Um, it's been on my mind a lot lately and I see it a lot in the comments. Uh, maybe I'll title it like, be, instead of being a fruit inspector, be a grace inspector. I don't know, something like that. See, fruit inspecting, what it ultimately stems from and comes from is the faults and heretical teachings of you know, Calvinism, Lordship Salvation, Arminianism, all the isms. Um, the problem with fruit inspecting is the, what they're doing is they're placing the object of one's faith on themselves instead of on Christ, instead of on His 100% finished redemptive work on the cross alone for their salvation, for their justification. And problem with this is what they're trying to do is justify themselves justify their salvation prove their salvation by what their works by their changed life by turning from their sins and we know that the bible makes it explicitly clear that none of that can save you turning from your sins will not save you that's the reason jesus came we needed someone who was perfect we needed that perfect sacrifice to take away our sins because for one, we were inherited, we were born with sin nature, and two, we've all sinned and broken God's law. You know, Jesus tells tells us, told the Pharisees that unless unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will know you will in no wise enter the kingdom of God. And the Bible also tells us that all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags before God. God isn't wanting your works. God isn't wanting your, your turning from sins. God, the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to, flee, to please God. Um, what is faith? Faith is trusting, believing in Christ, the gospel, in Christ's finished redemptive work on the cross, that he, in his death, burial, and resurrection alone for the forgiveness of sins. The problem with fruit inspecting, as I said, it it places the object of one's faith on themselves instead of Christ and ultimately causes people to live in a constant state of fear in uh, constant doubt of their salvation in constant condemnation never feeling like they're good enough um, see God God looks upon the heart man looks upon the flesh that's all we can see we can't see someone's heart and so that's why all we can go off of is one's testimony their profession of faith not based upon how they're living and so if somebody we're saved by faith in christ alone okay so when we when we talk to somebody and we ask them what are you trusting to get you to heaven and they say christ alone I'm trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of my sins, then we are to consider that one, that person, a brother or sister in Christ, not based upon any behavior change, any life reformation that they've done, because honestly, there are several very, very good people according to human standards that I know personally in my life that are atheists or don't believe in the God of the Bible that live very moral, upright, standing lives. And I know a lot of people who have reformed their lives, who have turned from what we would call sins, you know, whether it be pornography, uh, addiction to drugs, alcohol. None of these things prove that one is saved. What saves somebody? It's faith in Christ. And so when you are constantly looking and judging someone based upon their behavior, their behavior, their actions, you are you are putting them under the yoke under the bondage of the law and under a yoke of bondage. Um, and we know that's not of Christ. We've been set free from the law. Um, the law is to the point of the law was to be a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ, to shut our mouths before God, to show us that we are sinners, incapable of saving ourselves and showing our need for the Savior. And so, just, you know, when I when I was under the heretical teachings, the damnable heresies of 
Calvinism and Lordship Salvation and you know under these big named preachers like Paul Washer, John MacArthur, uh, Ray Comfort, R.C. Sproul, you name it. Um, I was constantly always in fear of losing my salvation, of, in fear of knowing if I'm truly one of God's elect or if you know I'm truly doing enough to be saved and you know if I stumbled and fell short it always put me into that bondage of fear and just spiritual anxiety and honestly it makes you scared of God like why am I still struggling with this said sin or what have you um, but you know what the other problem with this is when I the very the very brother who led me to the Lord who shared the gospel with me at one point in time, about a year into my into my walk with the Lord of being saved again, born again, he started stumbling and having uh, doubts and really was just struggling in his Christian walk. And me and another brother in Christ, we sat down with him and started fruit inspecting him. Like, hey, you know, if you're, if you're not doing X, Y, and Z and you're constantly dealing with this sin or... You know, maybe you were never saved. Are you sure you're really saved? And we just kept, you know, it's just, it's like the light kept getting dimmer and dimmer inside of him. We were putting him in bondage. We were putting him in fear. Instead, we as believers, we should be reminding each other who we are in Christ. Um, that we have Christ's imputed righteousness. That we are loved. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that if you have believed in the death, burial, and resurrection, that you are eternally saved and secured, as it says in Ephesians 1.13, and that we can know where we're going when we die. We can know that we have eternal life, as it says in 1 John 5.13. You see, it's so dangerous to, for one, to judge someone based upon their behavior, and two, to tell somebody that they need to produce be producing fruits because the problem is when you ask these people well okay well how much fruits and what fruits what is enough to to allow me to know problem is none of them give you an answer a clear-cut answer a biblical answer all their answers majority of the time are just arbitrary it's it's based upon themselves or someone else that they know um they're like i said it's constantly pointing towards oneself towards the sinner instead of towards the savior we are to trust in the Savior, not our behavior. So I just, I would just encourage you, like if you're, if you're listening to these types of teachers, these Calvinists or Lordship Salvationists, and people that are constantly teaching that you need to be doing X, Y, and Z to know that you're saved or to prove that you're saved, and you're under a, the spirit of bondage and fear i pray that you would just be set free from that today mark and avoid them you guys the gospel is simple it is the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ alone and the moment that you trust that as the progression of ephesians 1 13 says when you hear the gospel and you believe it you are sealed with the holy spirit of promise okay it's not based upon feelings it's not based upon anything magical it's based upon god's word his promises and he promises that you are when you have received christ that you are given the power to become the sons of god you are a child of god upon the moment of belief don't let anybody steal your hope your peace your joy that comes from christ and christ alone um, like i said mark and avoid these people if, if you are one of these people i pray that you would realize what you are saying realize what you are doing realize that you that nothing of yourself is going to get you to heaven it has to be christ alone and i just pray that if there's anybody that's not saved that you would trust in christ alone trust in his death burial and resurrection for the forgiveness of your sins you see to know that christ died is history but to believe that Christ died for you is salvation. The moment that you trust that God came down in the flesh, born of a virgin, lived the perfect and sinless life that we never could, that he 
you believe that he is the, the perfect, spotless Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, you believe that he went to that cross willingly nailing your sins, past, present, and future, to the cross and rose again the third day after dying, you are immediately, permanently, and eternally saved, sealed, sanctified, promised everlasting life. You are washed in the blood of Christ. When you stand before God the day that you take your last breath and you stand before God, He will see Christ's imputed righteousness to your account. He will see the righteousness of His Son. Not your works, not your changing of reforming of your life, not your trying to turn from sins. You will see Jesus' righteousness. So quit looking to yourself and look to the Savior. Remember who you are in Christ. You are loved. Nothing, nothing can separate, separate you from the love of God. No man can pluck you from the Father or the Son, including yourself. Once you have trusted and you are born again, you are saved. You are saved forever. Once redeemed, always redeemed. Once saved, always saved. Whatever you want to call it. God gives one type of life. That is eternal life. Not temporary not conditional, not probationary. There is nothing that you can do to lose your salvation once you have trusted in Christ. So if you are if you are the one fruit inspecting, or if you are being fruit inspected, just remember what the Bible says. Don't listen to man. Let God be true and every man a liar. And I pray that this brings somebody peace um, and Somebody who is under these false teachings or teaching this, I pray that you would have a change of mind, have a change of heart, and get back in your Bible and apply God's Word to your life. Um, that's all I got for you guys. Love you guys. Stay blessed in the Lord.